Hello everybody. So in this session, we will solve the second example on branch current method. So this is the particular example here. So here again, three voltage sources are there. One is of 80 volt, 150 volt, 100 volt. Different resistances are connected. And here we have to determine current flowing through 50 ohm resistance. So as we have seen in previous example, so while solving such type of problem using branch current method, we are following six steps. So again, same concept is applied here, same procedure we have to follow. So first step, we have to give the names. So again, starting from this point, let us say point A, B, C, D, E, F, G and H. So this is step number one. So in second step, we have to indicate the polarity of voltage source. So long line indicate plus, short line indicate minus, so plus, minus, plus, minus. That is the step number two. In third step, we have to represent various currents and we have to apply the KCL. So let us say this current as say I1, then current flowing through this 40 ohm, let us say it is I2 and remaining current by applying KCL, it will be I1 minus I2. Because incoming current is I1, out of that I2 is flowing towards node H, so remaining current will be I1 minus I2. So same current I1 minus I2, it will flow through 30 ohm. So up to this point, current will be same, that is I1 minus I2. Now this current I2, it will flow up to point H. So at point H, some of the current, it will flow through 50 ohm, remaining current will flow through 20 ohm. So let us use the symbol I3 for the current that is flowing through 50 ohm resistance. Then remaining current, so that will flow, it will be I2 minus I3. Again, if you apply KCL at node E, so incoming current is I1 minus I2 and I2 minus I3. So addition of these two current will be this current. So it will be I1 minus I3. Because this minus I2 and plus I2 it will get cancelled. So this I1 minus I3 will flow from E to F, F to G. From H, incoming current is I3. So this current will be I1 minus I3 plus I3, that is I1. So we have applied KCL correctly. Then in step number 4, we have to represent the polarity of voltage drops. So again the rule is, when current enters the resistance, it is plus, when it leaves, it is minus. Okay? So for this resistance, current enters here, so plus, it leaves, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus. Okay? Again it is quite clear, so why we are writing plus here and minus here, because from the basics we know current always flow from higher potential to lower potential and higher potential is usually represented by plus okay so that is the reason when current enters we write plus and when it leaves we write minus okay then in next step step number 5 we have to apply kvl again as we have seen we have to apply kvl that many times as there are number of equations now in this particular circuit there are three unknowns i1 I2 and I3. So number of KVL equation should be equal to number of unknowns. So we should apply KVL three times. Again, we will choose the simpler loops. So let us say this is first loop, loop number one. Let us say this as the second loop, loop number two. And this is third loop, loop number three. So just for simplicity, we are considering clockwise. We can consider in anti-clockwise also. Our answer will remain same. Okay. And in last step, we have to solve the simultaneous equations to get the answers or to get the unknowns. Okay? So we will apply the KVL. So apply KVL to loop 1. Now which is first loop? It is A, B, H, G, A. So in bracket, I will write A, B, H, G, A. These names are given just for understanding, okay? So it is not mandatory to give names. Now, which rule we have to apply? Which sign convention we have to follow in KVL? Rise in voltage is positive. 
whereas fall in voltage is negative now starting from point a we are moving from negative to positive means there is rise in voltage so it will be plus 80 now we should not multiply this 80 with current i1 because itself is the voltage so we should not multiply by the current plus from plus to minus there is decrease in voltage so by ohm's law voltage will be equal to current into the resistance so resistance value is 40 and current is i2 and there will be negative sign because there is decrease in voltage then next plus plus to minus now there is decrease in voltage so it will be minus 50 into i3 again from g to a there is no element here okay so there will not be any term equal to zero okay now we have to simplify this so what we can write minus 40 i2 minus 50 i3 equal to minus 80 or we can still simplify this so this will be 4 i2 plus 5 i3 equal to 8 if you divide each term by minus 10 so it will be plus 4 i2 plus 5 i3 equal to plus 8 so this is equation number 1 now next we have to apply kvl to second loop we apply kvl to loop what is the second loop we have given the names so in clockwise direction so g h e f g so that is the second loop so g h e f g okay again while moving from g to h there is rise in voltage so it will be plus 15 to i3 plus now h to e that is plus to minus now there is fall in voltage so it will be minus 20 into now how much current is flowing through this 20 ohm so it is i2 minus i3 so in bracket i2 minus i3 then e to f e to f that is from plus to minus now there is decrease in voltage so it will be minus 150 and finally f to g there is no element so there will not be any term so this is equal to zero so we have to simplify this if we simplify so it will be minus 20 i2 this term then plus 20 i3 plus 50 i3 that is 70 i3 equal to minus 150 on that particular side so it will be plus 150 that is equation number two then the last equation that is the third loop apply kvl to loop three now what is the third loop now third loop again in clockwise direction so it will be b c d e h b so i will write in bracket b c d e h b okay now if you observe carefully whenever we apply the kvl to loop so starting point and end point it should be same so we are starting from a we are reaching to a here we are starting from g reaching to g here starting from b we have reached up to b okay now b to c there is increase in voltage so plus 100 plus now plus to minus now there is decrease in voltage so it will be minus minus 30 sorry minus 30 into how much current is flowing i1 minus i2 i1 minus i2 plus now e to h we are moving from minus to plus means there is rise in voltage it will be plus 20 into how much current is flowing through this 20 ohm it is i2 minus i3 i2 minus i3 then h to b means minus to plus so it will be plus current is i2 resistance is 40 equal to zero so sum of voltages in a loop is zero now if you simplify this so 100 minus 30 i1 plus 30 i2 
प्लस ट्वेंटी आई टू माइनस ट्वेंटी आई थ्री प्लस फोर्टी आई टू इक्वल टू जीरो जस्ट एक्सपांडिंग द ब्रैकेट नो कंबाइनिंग द टर्म्स ऑफ आई वन आई टू एंड आई थ्री टुगेदर सो आई वन इट हैज ओनली वन टर्म सो यू कैन राइट माइनस थर्टी आई वन देन थर्टी आई टू प्लस ट्वेंटी आई टू दैट इज फिफ्टी आई टू प्लस फोर्टी आई टू दैट इज प्लस नाइंटी आई टू देन आई थ्री इट इज माइनस ट्वेंटी आई थ्री इक्वल टू माइनस वन हंड्रेड ओके अगेन वी कैन सिंप्लीफाई दिस बाय डिवाइडिंग बाय माइनस टेन ओके इफ यू डिवाइड बाय माइनस टेन सो इट विल बी थ्री आई वन माइनस नाइन आई टू प्लस टू आई थ्री इक्वल टू टेन इवन इफ यू डोंट सिंप्लीफाई वी विल गेट सेम एंसर सो दिस इज अवर थर्ड इक्वेशन ओके सो इनिशियली वी हैव टी थ्री अनोन्स एंड हियर बाय अप्लाइंग के वी एल टू थ्री लूप्स वी हैव गॉट थ्री equations equation number 1 equation number 2 equation number 3 again these equations we can solve by either cramer's rule or by using calculator directly we can get the answer okay so i will write the answer directly i1 i2 and i3 So these are the three equations: equation number one, two, and three. So after solving these three equations, so after solving equation one, two, and three, so we will get I one equal to point five ampere. I one equal to point five ampere. Then I two. Equal to minus 0.5 ampere and I3 equal to 2 ampere. This is after simplifying or after solving these three simultaneous equations. Now again check for the polarity. I1 it is positive plus 0.5. That is our assumption is correct. I2 it is minus 0.5. What is I2? I2 is current flowing through 40 ohm. It is minus. Meaning is that current flowing through 40 ohm, it is 0.5 ampere. But whatever we have assumed, that is from B to H, that is not correct. Actual current is flowing from H to B. I3, it is positive to ampere. That is current flowing through 50 ohm. That we have assumed from H to G, it is correct. Now what is our main aim? We want to determine current flowing through 50 ohm. So I can write here. So current flowing through 50 ohm resistance, which is nothing but I3, it is equal to 2 ampere, and it is flowing from point H to G. So from point H to G. Okay. So this is our final answer. So we can apply branch current method. to solve any complicated electric network and we can determine various unknown quantities hope you have understood this procedure thank you